Welcome to the Wind Pros. In this instructional, we're going to walk you through basic aspects for playing the wind in different hunting situations. We're going to talk about stand placement strategies, decoy strategies, rattling and calling sequences, and ground hunting. Then, we're going to walk you through using the powder of attraction, the Wind Pro Scrape Maker for making mock scrapes to attract, scout, and retain sure white tails in your area. In our world, human scent control and playing the wind are the two most critical factors when hunting a big game. As you can see, we play close attention, uh, implementing the use of uh, scent blocker garments, hats, gloves, jackets, boots, and pants to minimize our human odor. Then we're going to show you how much fun and how much success we've really been having using this product. Wind Pro Scrape Makers have been proven to attract mature whitetails. We literally have hours and hours of video footage to back this claim up. When you're big game hunting, wind is probably the most crucial element in hunting. Animals number one defense against humans and against predators is their sense of smell. You have to be able to beat that sense of smell. Wind Pro, we came out with a wind checker, which allows you to know which way that wind is blowing. When the wind is blowing into your targeted area, with area you're going to go hunting, if the animal smells you, they will leave the area. So a wind checker is a big have for every kind of hunting you do. You have to know which way the wind is going, and you have to be able to play the wind. When we uh, first came out with the Wind Pro wind checker, we wanted to come out with some new technology that allowed the wind checker to work better than some of the other ones on the market. The, the other plastics seem to get a little stiff in the cold weather. This will not stiffen up. Uh, you don't necessarily have to shake this one. You can if you want a little lighter thermal showing, a little lighter powder. Um, it clips on your waist. Uh, it's got a carabiner, so it's readily usable. I mean, you just clip it off and you go with it. Um, we came out with a plastic just because we, we wanted a, a better material. This is the new uh, smoke and powder technology. Now if the wind's a little heavier, you want to have a little more uh, powder come out, you just hold it at an angle and give it a better squeeze. And you'll be able to read this powder downwind for quite a ways. It'll go about 10, 15 yards and you can still see the powder blowing. Here's the lighter again. Kind of a smoking effect. Then heavier. Another key reason you want to have a wind checker is to be able to read the thermals. And thermals are the heating of the earth, causing the wind conditions to go up or go down as the earth heats. Uh, I hunt a lot out west. When I'm out west, the conditions change. In the morning, the thermals seem to blow up, blow up the mountain. And in the evening, as it cools, it seems to come down the mountain. So when you're hunting big game, you've got to know those conditions. And even if you're sitting in a stand and you're blowing your powder, you'll see the powder drift out, but then you'll see it drop sometimes, or you'll see it come up. You've got to be able to understand that. If, if you're hunting a stand and the wind conditions changes and the thermals changes, as you're sitting there, if it's blowing into where you expect the animals to come from, you're going to create an issue with those animals. They're going to smell you and you're going to have a problem. If that happens when I'm hunting, I don't want to ruin my stand, even if it's, you know, key time, I will leave that stand and try and set up at another stand site that has a better wind condition for me. So you have to know the thermals, you have to know the wind conditions at all times. That's why these wind checkers are probably one of the most valuable tool you can use in the industry. The reason you need to play the wind when hunting big game animal, especially deer, is that the deer's nose is more sensitive than a dog and they say a deer can smell up to a thousand yards. Our product is scent free for that very reason when you're just hunting the wind. So you need to play the wind to beat these animals. When I'm setting up stands for the year's hunt or I'm going to be placing a stand when I go to a different area and I want to do some movement of that stand, 
I will not go set that stand if that wind is wrong. If it's blowing into where I'm setting that stand up, I will stay out, I'll take my wind checker and, and look at the, the map or the wind and see what it's gonna do for that day. And then I will go to that area I'm gonna place that stand in. I have a wind checker on me at all times, even when I'm hanging a stand. Cause I'll put that stand up, I'll sit in the stand, I'll take my wind checker and see which way the wind's blowing or even which way the thermals are blowing at that time of day. I'll actually take my watch and go, ah, oh, it's one o'clock. The wind is taking my scent down and up and over. And I'll go, you know, maybe I don't want to sit here at one o'clock. That's blowing right into a core issue. Uh, I'll do that early, but I will not do it later in the season when I'm going to move a stand or hang a new set for, for filming out of. I will always, always use the wind in my favor and use my wind checker and play the wind. If I'm setting in a stand and I know I've got the right wind when I get in there in the morning and all of a sudden I can kind of feel the wind changing a little bit, I've got that wind checker ready. I'll give a little uh, squeeze, see which way the wind's blowing. And if it has changed and all of a sudden is blowing into that area, I'm going to try and get out of that stand as fast as I can. When you've got limited areas to hunt, you don't want to ruin it with your scent in there. You've got to know which way that wind's blowing at all times. You have to be able to check it. And that's where a wind checker is one of the most valuable tools. It is crucial. I know that sometimes you're limited on time on the places you can go, but you go in there once with the wrong wind and that big boy's in there, you're gonna boot him out of there and you are not gonna see him again. The use of decoys. I love using a decoy. I mainly hunt decoys on the edge of a field. Now it's the same principle. I have to know which way that wind's blowing. I will not set that decoy up if I think that wind is blowing away from me into the decoy across to where I think the deer are gonna come from. You have to use the same principle. You have to be downwind of that decoy. And I like to set the decoy out at about 20 yards, turn slightly towards me, which will cause when a buck does decide to come in and sees that decoy, he'll try and circle in behind that deer and try and get downwind of him just to smell it. You want enough room that that animal that's coming in, that buck, can come around because he's going to try and get in head first on that animal. If you set him too close to you, that buck might actually get behind your tree, wind you, and take off. So again, same principle. We're checking the wind, making sure we're setting up the decoy in the right spot. When I set a decoy up, I like to be on an edge of the field. I seem to have the best luck with that. I will try and find a point or a pinch area that they're gonna be able to see the decoy from different spots. And again, I try and have some kind of cover behind me or an area that they might not be able to get in and smell me or whatever they need to do, you know, to look up and say, okay, I'm nailed. I don't want them to smell me at any cost. So I need to know what that wind is doing. I have to play the wind in the decoy situation. Decoys are exciting. They don't work every time. Some animals just don't like it, but decoy is a good, fun time to have. I always have one a call with me and rattling horns. I will put that decoy out and do a little rattling sequence and do a little calling and hope that that deer that's across the way or is coming can hear that and he's gonna go, hey, what's with the battle going on? He'll see that decoy and hopefully he'll come drawing into that decoy and hopefully give you a shot to get your animal. One of the most important times to play the wind is when I do a rattling sequence or I use a deer call. And I never go into woods without either one of them. That's key. You just don't know what time of year those are gonna work. I always have my wind checker on me. A lot of times I hang it on my binoculars, so I've got it ready. To, I can just clip off that carabiner, give a little squirt. There's been many times when I've been able to see a deer coming from a distance and wanna make sure that that wind isn't gonna screw me up a little bit. I'll give it a little squeeze and you'll see the powder float in the right direction and gives you a little more sense that, hey, I'm set for this animal, relaxes you and you know the animal's relaxed, you can set up and be positioned and be ready for that animal. When I go to set up for a rattling sequence, uh, a lot of times I like to rattle from the ground. I, I love the ground because then I can scratch up the ground while I'm doing the rattling and uh, be set up for the deer to come in. But I always have to obviously play the wind. I don't want the wind blowing if, uh, where I think the animal is going to come from. I've got to set up downwind of that animal so I can call him in and he's not going to be out there looking for me or smelling me as my wind is playing out. So if I've got like a river bank or a river or even a hillside to set up so the animal can't get around me, I will do that. It is key to try to have some kind of barrier behind you to prevent that animal from seeing or smelling you once he gets around. 
So I almost always do that. I mean, it's, it's, it's essential, especially with, uh, with the rattling sequence. Calling, you know, you can call from a lot of different directions, but I will always, always in rattling, have and be set up downwind of that animal. It is the key to rattling, period. When hunting on the ground, it's a little different conditions, obviously, than hunting in a tree. When you're in the tree, the wind will have a tendency to carry your scent out and farther away from you. But when you're on the ground, it's blowing it on the ground constantly and you're actually leaving scent on the ground. So it's even more critical to know which way that wind's blowing. When you're sitting on the ground, you want to make sure the wind isn't blowing out to the area you're expecting those deer to come from. Same principle as everything else, but now you're on the ground and they've got a better chance of movement, seeing you move. You want to be able to make sure that scent is blowing away from the field you're hunting or you are going to spook those animals out of there. It's equally as important as an archer and as a gun hunter to be able to play the wind. It's the same principle. We all have to be conscious of which way our wind is blowing, which way the thermals are blowing, no matter what. A gun hunter has less of a chance. You know, he might only have a five-day season. Whereas archers, you know, we probably start in September and end uh, at the end of December. We almost get three, four months to hunt. So when you take a gun hunter who's got five days to hunt, you want to make sure you're planning on hunting that wind correctly. And that's why a wind checker is definitely a plus in that aspect. You know, there's a lot of different land situations. You go out to Kansas, it's more open. You hunt the Midwest, you've got more wooded areas. You've got to be able to handle both situations. Kansas, you just never know where the deer are gonna come from, but you're gonna try and do your best. You, you're gonna try and set up with the right wind condition. You're gonna have your wind checker checking it for you constantly. Yeah, you're gonna give up something maybe downwind, but hopefully you've set up that three-fourths of the rest of the property is in your favor. Uh, my Kansas buck from last year, we were playing the wind uh, extremely well. The wind was coming into our face. The guy said the deer are going to be coming from that area and we believed him. We had a river bank set up behind us which you know would prevent the deer from coming in from that direction. Sure there might have been deer there but we, we didn't have that opportunity. I'm sitting in the tree and this buck comes in. We knew he was there because we were running cam tractors and we were ready to, you know, we had an idea what was in this area. So we're set up, the wind condition is blowing right into our face, and Kansas is always windy. It never stops blowing in Kansas. Well, the animal's coming from behind us, jumps the fence, and is standing right underneath my tree. The animal walks out, goes over to the riverbank, stops. He backed out and started to go down towards the water. At 20 yards, I had a simple shot, put it right through the smoke station, and we ended up getting this animal. So from playing the wind right, we ended up getting a fairly decent buck. We had a good time and that's what it's about. In a wooded area, you know, you, you, you've, got, you've got different situations. Yeah, you might have something coming from behind you, but hopefully you've set up properly that the trail is down, 
down in front of you and the wind is blowing into your face and you've got that trail to shoot at and hopefully you're not going to alert that animal with any of your smells. You, and this is where it's key that you are set up with the wind condition in the right spot. You may sometimes have to have two or three different stands in the same little chunk of area that you're in. You might be 100 yards or 100 feet away from your other stand. If the wind's directly good for one day, you sit there. If it's not, you sit in the stand that's on the other side. It gets a little expensive, but sometimes you've got to put a little effort in it to get these animals, and you have to play the wind. You know, one of the great things that I found about the WinPro is that it's a powder-based system. It's not a liquid. I don't have to worry about refrigerating it. I don't have to worry about bacteria buildup. Not only that, but it comes as an attractant in a buck, in a doe. It's also a cover scent, and it lets you check the wind. This is a great system, and I highly recommend it. Some of the most effective ways to use this product is to use it for mock scrapes. Now, you can't shoot a trophy deer if there's not a trophy deer in your area. And one of the best ways to find out if there's something there is to put out a mock scrape, put a camera over it. Now, not only can you find out what's in your area by documenting it through pictures, but you can actually attract big deer to your area. So you can set up a scrape in the form of a doe to attract bucks, or you can set up a scrape in the form of a buck that will challenge bigger bucks in the area. And let me tell you, that is an effective way to use this product. Just to prove that, one of the pro staff for WinPro actually set up a mock scrape here. He documented a nice trophy buck coming in, patterned that deer, and harvested it. Now that just proves to you how effective this product actually is. So the middle of October, 2010, David made three mock scrapes on the farm. Although we were getting no mature buck activity on any of the cameras, we still continued to monitor and hang cameras on over each of the mock scrapes. We also hung a wildlife eye over one scrape on the stand that I hunted the night that I shot the buck. So on the 28th, the evening at five o'clock, I got into the farm, walked up to the mock scrape, freshened the scrape on the ground and also the licking branches and got into my stand. So at low light, a mature whitetail entered the food plot, walked across the food plot, walked up to the mock scrape, and worked the mock scrape for four to five minutes. He finally presented me with a shot. I came to full draw. He heard me, stepped away from the mock scrape, and I shot the whitetail. So after the morning that we recovered the deer, David Haley returned from Kansas. We re retrieved the film and also the wildlife eye and went through the footage. It was to our surprise that the same buck that I had shot had visited the three mock scrapes and we had pictures of him from all three trail cameras. Now one of the most exciting tactics that I like to use is with a decoy when I'm archery hunting. We'll actually have deer come nose to nose with our decoys. But in order to do that, not only do you have to look like a deer with your decoy, but your decoy has to smell like a deer. That's the beauty of the wind pro. You can smell like a doe or you can smell like a buck and bring that deer in right next to your stand. So we want to start these uh these mock scrapes in mid-September. Now typically what we do is we 
we started out with the dominant buck, which is the tan bottle. Just a few tough puffs on the licking branches and a few on the ground, that's all it takes. We want to get these does to hit these licking branches. Once they hit them, then it's pattern. It's just a matter of time before the buck starts showing up. Then, when the uh, rut approaches, then we start using the, the yellow bottle, which is the doe and estrus. Now the key is the licking branches. That's the first attractant. That's what's going to get the does hitting in these licking branches. And the does are what is going to, are going to get the, the bucks hitting these branches. So it's very key. The best way to utilize our product is to uh, put out a series of scrapes. And, and you want to start early, try and get these animals patterned. We're looking for travel corridors that are leading from bedding areas to feeding areas. That's where these animals are going to make their scrapes and that's, that's where you want to hang a stand and that's where you want to make your scrapes, your mock scrapes. I will start out these mock scrapes and, and hang trail cameras. It's a very exciting and very fun way to pattern these animals. Uh, I've been hunting over these mock scrapes, I think, for about five years, and, and I really, really get excited by it, particularly when you're, you're utilizing trail cameras and you know what's visiting these scrapes. It is uh, very exciting. You know, the does start to hit them, and then a matter of uh, days to weeks, uh, suddenly the bucks that uh, haven't been on this particular area start uh, traveling and frequenting these scrapes. Now, this is really really exciting and and I've seen it time and time again I've had no mature bucks on my area <clears throat> I use this uh, this powder tract and make the mock scrapes uh, the does start utilizing it and then it's just a matter of time before the bucks from other areas start uh, coming to these scrapes and I can pattern them and I've been very successful and I know uh, you will too if you utilize these uh, very simple strategies. Now, a lot of people say, what's a, what's a scrape? And in the deer world, a scrape is how they communicate. Uh, both the bucks and does actually use scrapes. And, and uh, a scrape is going to be always, uh, it's going to have an overhanging limb. And we call that a licking branch. And what they do is they rub their, their antlers or their foreheads on this licking branch. They also lick it and, and put their saliva on it. But what the rubbing motion does, it stimulates some glands, glandular secretion. Then they urinate or defecate over their tarsal glands, which are on the rear legs, and that leaves their footprint. The identifying mark of the white tail. Now, what a white tail can read from that is the age, the sex, and the approximate time that particular deer is going to come into estrus. Now that is an amazing, insanely interesting uh, scientific fact about, about the whitetail world. Mm -hmm.